Nice little baby, don't you cry. You'll get your swan bath by and by. You bet. Swan suds faster than other floating soaps. Baby gentle suds, too. Mild as imported Castile's. Great for baby's bath and swell for mommy's and daddy's, too. I swan. How about you? The makers of Rinso are proud to present The Mayor of the Town, starring Lionel Barrymore. Good evening, friends. <clears throat> Welcome to Springdale. I'm mayor here, you know, and I'd like you to know the keys to the town are yours. I guess Springdale is pretty much like your town, well, pretty much like most towns here in the United States. And the people, well, they're a lot like your own neighbors. Here comes one of our folks now. He's one of the most respected citizens. I'd like you all to meet Arlo Wilcox. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. And how do you do, friends? Well, now that we're all acquainted, there's just one thing left for you to find out about. The product that brings you the show. What's that? You say you already know about Rinso? You say you've used it in your wash tubs and your washers and dish pans for years? You say you're crazy about those dazzling Rinso white washes? About the way Rinso leaves your washable colors bright and fresh? You say you're delighted with the time, work, and money Rinso saves you? Well, what are we waiting for? No point in my saying anything further. Let's get on with the show. The Mayor of the Town, starring Lionel Barrymore. Good morning, Mayor. Good morning, Jim. Good morning, Mayor. Good morning, Hetty. Good, Good morning, morning, Mayor. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Mayor. Good morning, Minnie. It's a beautiful morning, Mayor. Yes, it is, Minnie. I think it's going to rain, though. i got a feel in my kneecap. Uh, what's on the calendar this morning, Minnie? Well, there's a meeting of the aldermen at 10.30. You have to decide on the site of the new schoolhouse at 11.30. The plumbers' union is coming at 1. All right, the... all right, all right. That's far enough, Minnie. <laughs> uh, did you get me the figures on the Navy recruiting drive to date? They're right on top of that pile. I heard the speech you made on the radio last night, Mayor. If I was a man, I'd have enlisted on the spot. Well, patriotism isn't hard to sell, Minnie. But acting on it's another matter. When we ask Springdale sons to enlist in the Navy, we have to make mighty sure that we keep Springdale just the kind of place they think they're fighting for. Yes. Uh, by the way, Tom Williams just came in. He's waiting to see you, Mayor. But you have to get your papers together for the alderman meeting. Oh, hang the meeting. Tom! Tom! Come on in here. Good morning, Mayor. Well... What can I do for you, son? May I see you alone for a moment? Of course. Minnie has some papers to get together for me. Now, don't let him stay too long, Mayor. This meeting... Ah, is... that'll be all, Minnie. <laughs> Gee, what's the matter with her? Well, this isn't one of Minnie's good mornings. <laughs> what's the trouble, Tom? I want to join the Navy. Well, what does your father say? He says I've got no right to quit law school, that if I do, he'll disown me. He said I'd be more of use to my country with a degree and some sense in my head. So what do you want me to do, Tom? I want you to make Dad see that he's got to let me go. He won't listen to me. What kind of a man will say let other men's sons go, but not mine? I'm not very proud of my father right now. Ah, uh, Tom, don't ever say anything like that in front of me again. There's never been a minute in the 40 years of friendship between your father and me that I haven't been proud to call him a friend. Sometimes it's hard to let go of the things we love. Well, I've told you how I feel, and I've told him. If you don't like it, I'm sorry. Oh, don't go like that, Tom. There's really nothing else to say. I'm sorry I took up your time. Well, good morning, Mayor. <clears throat> Minnie! I don't know why you won't use that buzzer. What is it, Mayor? Oh, I'm tired, Minnie. I'm going home. I have some gardening to do. But, Mayor, the, the, the alderman's meeting, the school site, the plumber's union... Well, they'll have to wait. I've got to get to my rose bushes. I've got some heavy thinking to do. Mm -hmm. 
I'm going out in the garden, Marilla. If anyone calls, I don't want to be disturbed. It's a pity that a grown man can't do a spell of thinking without getting down on his knees with his hands in the dirt. Well, wipe your shoes on the stoop before you come in. What are we having for dinner? Stew. Oh, stew. You know I don't like stew. Anytime you're dissatisfied, Mr. Mayor, you can get a new housekeeper. I'm not one to say where I'm not wanted. Uh, Marilla, what do you think about the war? Oh, i just like to have five minutes alone with a tea kettle of skull and water and that Hitler. <laughs> If you had a son, would you want him to fight? Mm. Yes, I expect I would. Did you like my speech last night asking for recruits? I've heard you make better. You cleared your throat nine times and you lost your place twice. Mm. Marilyn, I'm worried about Tom. He wants to enlist. Well, if I was the mayor and making fine speeches on the subject, I'd do everything in my power to help him. It isn't so easy when it comes home, is it? A little bit afraid to face the judge, aren't you? Is there anything you don't know, you old witch? Not much. Oh, the judge and I have been playing checkers every night for 20 years. That may end if I interfere between him and his boy. Well, there's other fish in the sea. You're the mayor and there's certain things you've got to do. What's right for one is right for all. Yeah, yeah, I know. That was in my campaign speech. What's right for one is right for all. <laughs> Marilly, where's my gardening gloves? I'm go out and wrestle with this thing. Evening, Mayor. Evening, Judge. Feel like a game of checkers? Might. It's a nice night, isn't it, Jim? Yeah. Put me in mind of the night I was first courting Anne. The dusk turning deeper every minute, and the stars coming out, and the sweet smell of late summer in your lungs. Anne had a blue dress that summer, and she looked like a picture. Did you remember, Jim? Mm -hmm. Misty it was with lace. Ah, oh, so I didn't have lace. It had ribbons. <laughs> Anne couldn't abide lace on anything. It had lace. I remember just as well as those ridiculous celluloid collars that you wore. It had lace. <laughs> well, maybe you're right. I don't know. I'm not too good at remembering clothes, even then. But I know exactly how blue her eyes were, and the line of her cheek, and the curve of her lips. And I remember our hair used to be like sunshine when she'd stand on this porch and say goodbye. Things seem all wrong sometimes, don't they, Jerry? Seems as though Anne should be right out here with us now. Well, maybe she is. Well, let's get started with the checkers. Might as well beat you now and get it over with. Beat me now? Why, you never beat me squarely in your whole life. Why, you old checker-cheating scoundrel? Are you inferring I don't play, honestly? What about the time you said you jumped three and it had only been two? That was 19 years ago. Does that make it any more honest? Go ahead, move. Judge, Tom was in to see me today. Tom? What do you want? He said he wanted to enlist in the Navy and you wouldn't let him. That's right, I won't. He's got plenty of time ahead for fighting. Right now, he's going to finish law school. The boy feels it's his duty to go and he's right. Well, he shall go someday if necessary, but not yet. Not just yet. Let him finish school. Uh, you remember the Cummins boy who used to deliver groceries? Well, he's gone. Charlie Jackson's son from Harvard, and, and, and the young D.A. in your own court. Why, confounded man, this is a last desperate war for survival. The country has to be defended and held at any cost. Oh, I'll grant you raised a boy well, Jim. You taught him pride in country and pride in self. But today you should say thank God. Thank God for this son who's got enough honor and honesty to face the fact that his country is in a death struggle and needs him. Tell me, do, do you think he wants to go? Do you think it's easy for him? Mm, no, I, I don't think that. Well, then, uh, are you going to have less courage than he has? I would go myself if I could. It's easier to die yourself than to see someone you love die. Oh, he'll be back in that school next year, finishing up. He's... He's my whole life. 
I've waited for the day when I'd see his name on the door with mine. Jim Williams and son. I've lived for that day. It's Tom and me. May we come in? Of course. Come in, children. Come in, Jane. Good evening, Jack. Hello. Good evening, Mayor. Hi, fathers. Dad, Janie and I, we've been talking. And I think, well, that is, Janie thinks. I, I mean, we think. <laughs> come on, come on. Speak up, son. Well, it's that uh, we know we're young and all that, but for a long time... Oh, tell him it started when you saw my dolls, and it's never ended. Tell him it began when I was 15 and you were 17, and you kissed me. Tell him it began too just now in the garden. Stars looked down in the trees that we've known all our lives just this year. Tell him it's going to be forever. And we want to go There, you see, that's how it is. There. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think I begin to understand. You understand? What right have you to understand? I am the father here. So you're engaged. Is that what you're trying to say, son? Yes, sir. Well, sir, I'm proud of you. You picked the prettiest and the nicest girl. You're going to cry. You do, and I'll push your face in. <laughs> well, that's a nice romantic thought. <laughs> we want to get married right away, sir. Get married right away? Oh, now that's another matter. You're both pretty young. Boy, you, you wouldn't want to get married and leave right away for the Navy, would you? Leave right away for... Dad, is it all right? You won't mind if I enlist? I shall be most proud of you. Then we have to get married more than ever now. Well, you'd be pretty lonely with a husband away at war. Wouldn't be easy. It isn't easy to go to war, either. You have no right to stop us. No one in the world has a right to stop us because... Well, because no one can promise us anything. We're the ones that are making the sacrifices. We have a right to whatever happiness we can get. Have you talked to your mother about this, Janie? Yes, she understands. Well, Mr. Mayor, will you be free to perform a wedding in the next few days? Mr. Judge, I shall consider it an honor. A real honor. Under the authority vested in me and in the presence of God and this company, we've come to these chambers this evening to join together this young man and this young woman in man. Congratulations, Mr. and Mrs. Williams. The very best of health and good fortune to both of you. Isn't it wonderful? Oh, Tom, isn't it wonderful? Make them printed in the records a mile high, Mayor. Mr. and Mrs. Tom Williams. And let's remember every moment of it. The way the mayor's tie stood up. The judge's hair. But this is the beginning. We're young and we have each other in the whole darn world. Will you remember all those things about your wedding, Mr. Williams? I'll remember you. <laughs> Extra, extra naval battle, extra big naval battle, midnight special, extra read all of them. Oh, now who can that be waking a buddy up in the middle of the night? Oh, no respect for common decency. Well. Telegram for the mayor. Sign here. What is it, Marilla? Some fool telegram. Here it is. No. Oh, no. Well, what is it? Don't stand there looking like that. You're enough to scare a buddy out of his skin. What is it? The following Springdale boys reported dead or missing in the Coral Sea. Dead, James Connor. Robert Winters. Tom Williams. Uh, may I come in, Judge? I knew you were up. I saw the light in your window. Come in. I just received a wire. I know you must have had one. Yes, I've had one. 
I don't know why I came exactly, but, uh, except that I, I wanted to be with you. He died by his gun. They, they say there'll be a medal. Fine. Fine. I'll hang it on the door beside my name. Oh, do you hate me so bitterly? You sent my son to his death. <laughs> That's a hard way of looking at it, Jim. I've come to the conclusion that you're a hard man and an ambitious one. It'll look well on the records, the number of recruits you were able to get. A few friends lost in the process, a boy or two dead surely won't matter. Oh, is it possible you don't understand how this has gone with me? Why, I taught Tom to hold his first baseball bat. I, I taught him to swim. A few months ago, I officiated at his wedding. Yes, you officiated at his wedding. And tomorrow you will hold further ceremony for him and his comrades. You'll make a speech about patriotism and expect to fill our hearts with your words. But the devil take your words. Couldn't you even leave me in peace to my sorrow? Did you have to impose even on my grief? I, I thought we were almost brothers. I, I, I thought what came to one of us came to both. Brothers, you are the mayor. And I am a father who has lost his son. The city lies between us. Oh, Jim, Jim, don't be like this, please. Don't do this. You don't mind if I say good night? <sighs> well, good night, Judge. I apologize for imposing. Good night, sir. <laughs> Jamie's in the parlor. I gave her some hot milk, but she wouldn't touch it, poor little thing. No, I'll go right in. Janie, my dear. I know. The papers are out. I know. Oh, it's too bad. It's too bad. I keep saying to myself, all over and done with. All over and done with. But the words don't ring true. I keep seeing him running down the street, leaping the fence. I remember the freckles he always got in the summer. And the strong look of his hands on a steering wheel. I remember him in this room. Standing here trying to say that we wanted to get married. And I remember his eyes. And the warmth of his lips. And I keep telling my heart, all over and done with, but my heart won't listen. Oh, drink your milk, Jenny. D don't let yourself go to pieces. No, don't go to pieces, Jenny. Keep walking in the same pattern. It isn't hard to live without your heart once you get used to it. Drink some milk, Janie. It's warm and soothing. It'll quiet your nerves and drown your memory. He died bravely and gallantly. Do you want to weaken his death with tears? Do you want to dilute his sacrifice? Now, my dear, listen to me. Don't touch uh, me. Don't you dare touch me. You killed him, do you hear me? He went because of the things... The things you did. Oh, Janie, I've known Tom Williams since the hour he was born. I loved him like a son. Love? You don't know the meaning of love. You aren't a man, you're... You're an institution. <laughs> well, perhaps, Janie. Everything I do is done in the name of the city. That's the way it has to be. But what is the city? It's you and the judge and the Larson boy and the Uptons on the next street. The city is the people, and I'm its voice. The danger of each and every one is my personal danger, and their sorrow is my sorrow. The sacrifices I ask are in its name and for its preservation. I've loved you all my life. I think I hate you now. Well, go ahead and hate me, Jamie. See if it'll ease your heart. It's your democratic privilege to hate or like the mayor. But, girl, do you think I wanted to send Tom to war? Do you think I wanted to send any of them? I saw another war. I know how the bodies look face down in the mud and something inside me weeps that these things must be again. You knew he'd probably never come back. Why did you let him go? Why didn't you stop him? Because he said he was an American. And because being an American is being a free man. And unfortunately, freedom must be bought in blood. 
It was purchased that way once at Valley Forge and must be kept. Jeannie, I'm not very proud of you right now. I thought there was strength in you and courage. I've lost it. How can I bear that? How can you bear it? How did the women bear it who stood listening to the guns of Yorktown with death in their hearts? How did those white-faced women who opened the first dispatches from Gettysburg bear it? And the women who wore gold stars in 1918? It wasn't easy, Janie, to keep the level eye and the grief held in stern check and the head erect. Their men died for America, and regardless of the swift, shock pain, they went on living and working and fighting to keep America so that those dead didn't die in vain. Theirs was the courage and the faith that kept the flag of freedom in the wind. Can you live in their country and lack the same stamina? Are you unworthy to follow in their footsteps? Well, Janie... I'm so ashamed. I'm so ashamed. I'll find a way to help somehow. You did love him, didn't you? And you love him now. I'm so sorry. Oh, Jamie. <sighs> that little boy that skinned his knees on those front steps and skated and rode bicycles down the street and fell in love next door has left an emptiness in the hearts of two old men that can never be filled. But the sons must fight for the cities. And so Tom is dead in the coral seas. And there's an end of a chapter for you. And the end of a book for his father and me. But well, that's the way it has to be. The end, you say. And yet not quite the end. Not quite the end of Tom and the skin knees and the bicycles. Not when there's to be a son to come and live in the same pattern. Not when there's to be a son... My friends and neighbors, we've come here to commemorate those of our sons who have given their lives in this great struggle in which we're now engaged. Believe me, I know the personal grief of each and every one of you. I, who have no son of my own blood, have shared the lives of yours. I've known the progress of teeth and broken legs and baseball teams and romances. I've heard them sing at football games and insult the baseball umpires. Now I've seen them march away to play a deadlier game, still singing and insulting. <laughs> Some of them are not to return. Some of them have already given their lives in the name of America. And you who saw them go, ask me, is it right? Why did they go? What did they die for? And I must answer you in this manner. They died for Patrick Henry, for Nathan Hale and John Paul Jones. They died for schools and movie houses and summer picnics, country roads, woods in Maine, and lakes in California for the right to say what they like and to like what they like and debunk what they don't like. All those things that became suddenly sacred to them when they were threatened. We have lost them, weep for the quiet streets, the empty hearts. But we'll go on living the same pattern they held most dear. For the soil is free, the skies are empty, and the cities are unscarred. The flag is still triumphant, and that triumph belongs to them. Oh, Janie. Yes, I am. I'm going your way. You mind if I walk along with you? Oh, I should be honored to have such a pretty young lady on my arm. Here. Afternoon, Mayor. A fine speech. 
Hello, afternoon, Judge. Um, uh, it's a bit warm, isn't it? Mm, uh, <clears throat> well, confound it, you never did have the manners you were born with. Are you going to ask me if I'm stopping by for checkers or not? I can always find another partner, don't forget. Oh, do you, do you feel like a game of checkers, Judge? Uh, might. Do you mind if I stop in and watch? Just to see that you don't cheat? Who oh, cheats? Cheat. Oh, you do. Come on, boys. Our star, Mr. Barrymore, will return in just a moment. You know, I'd be the last one to say there's no room for difference of opinion. But when a lot of experts agree on something, there, it seems to me, is an opinion well worth listening to. Now, the makers of 33 leading washers are unanimous in recommending our new anti-sneeze Rinso. Such a recommendation should carry a great deal of weight with you ladies, and I hope it does. For if you take the advice of these experts to try Rinso, you'll be doing your clothes and your washer a great favor. Here's what I mean. The makers of the famous Norge washers have long told their customers to use Rinso. Now they have more reason than ever to do so, for there are no new washers being made for the duration. Yes, the washer industry is devoting its full time to the war effort. Yet the Norge people want you to keep your washer in the running. So they repeat, use Rinso. For with Rinso, it takes as little as a five-minute run to turn out a spanking clean load of clothes. And that saves not only your clothes, but your washer. And one more suggestion. Have your Norge checked by a reliable dealer. And do use the new anti-sneeze Rinso regularly. And now we take you behind the scenes to meet the mayor himself, Mr. Lionel Barrymore. I'd like to say thank you for tuning in tonight. I hope you've enjoyed the show, and I hope you'll tune in again every week. We'll try to make it interesting for you, and I think we'll succeed. Because the things that happen in Springdale are the warm, human things that happen in your town, in every town in America. Some of them serious, some of them funny, <laughs> all of them real. That's why when the sponsors of this show, the makers of Rinso, spoke to me about it, I was full of enthusiasm to do it. Yes, I was proud to be associated with a show that would reflect the American scene as this one does. And I'll tell you something else. I'm pretty proud of my sponsors, too. Rinso's a mighty familiar part of the American scene. So once again, I'm glad you listened tonight. And I hope you'll make this get-together a regular habit. Good night. Mr. Barrymore appears through the courtesy of Metro Goldwyn Mayor Studios. The mayor of the town was written by Miss Jean Holloway. And this is Harlow Wilcox inviting you to be with us again next week, same time. Good night. This program came from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company.